This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Guys, and we're live back here in Think Tech Studios, coming to you guys with episode 13 here in Honolulu, Hawaii. And we still haven't gotten canceled. Isn't that pretty awesome? So thank you guys for uh, tuning in and having, you know, supporting us throughout the globe. A financial literacy show on, on live air. That's pretty crazy, right? But thank you guys. Um, today, I don't have an awesome guest. It's just going to be me sharing my personal situations I have gone through. As you guys can see in the description box, and for the people that hear this on, their, on the podcast or YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, I'm going to give you guys the top five mistakes I made in business and lessons that I learned and the personal lessons that go with them. So I hope that be very useful to you guys. It'll be a very personable show, but you guys, I'm pretty sure I got a thousand more mistakes to make and I probably made, I'm pretty sure I made hundreds of other ones, but I'm just going to be highlighting this one because I'm going to be highlighting this one. Um, just the, just the ones I picked up. I just picked up the top five that I figured that if I can share my shortcomings and mistakes that you may pick up something, you may learn something on it too. All right? So without further ado, I don't have a lot of time, and I definitely know you guys don't have a lot of time, so we're going to jump straight into it. So the first one I'm going to get to is it's a classic mistake that I see people make all the time. One I made myself, right? So you create a product or you create a project, and when you create this product or project, the first thing you have a tendency to do is to be able to ask people around you what they think about a particular product or project. When you sit back and you ask people to say, hey guys, I want to, hey guys, I want to um, test out this new product, you're gonna ask your friends and family. And let's say this product is for children and kids. For example, you like me, you're a children's book author. You write this children's book or whatnot. So you go ask your 45-year-old brother, your 60-year-old mother, grandparents, or whatever the case may be, because they're the closest people around you for their advice on this particular product. Now, granted, if you got some good a good circle, they may be able to give you great advice and may give you some pointers. But a lot of times, the people that you're asking are not in your target market. What I mean by that is you are probably asking someone who's not really interested in your product. Let's say, for example, I'm not a huge NASCAR fan. I really don't watch NASCAR. But one of my good friends writes a NASCAR, he makes a NASCAR book or a NASCAR show, anything to do with NASCAR. And since I'm a good friend, he decides to ask me, hey, Prince, what you think of this NASCAR? You think it's cool or whatnot? I may look at it and may not give him the best advice because I'm not in his target market because I don't watch NASCAR. So the thing about it is people always, well, usually you will go around your circle and you would ask people in your circle to say, hey, um, what do you think about this particular product? And they're not looking at the product, you know, itself. They're looking at you and they're looking at you as their brother, cousin, friends, coworker, whatever the case may be. And their, and their critique may be a little screwed. But sometimes what people do, they say, hey, what do you think of this? Oh, it sucks and the person just throws it away, they think it's a bad idea. So they're trying to appease the people that are around them instead of the people that are in their target market. For a prime example, if you created a product for a 12-year-old girl, maybe you want to ask some 12-year-old girls or their parents to say, hey, what do you think of this product? You niche it down to that particular product, not go out and ask your circle of people who don't care about your product, who are not interested in your product, and who's in your circle. Now, sometimes you have great circles where people can think outside of the box and say, hey, I, I'm going to shift this and try to think in a different uh, light or whatnot. Because, and, and on top of that, sometimes when people see you, when you're very first starting out, they compare your product to the best product on the market. Which is nothing wrong with that, but sometimes when you're very starting, when you're very, very start, let's say you started a blog, your blog is not going to be compared to the top blog in the world because you're just starting out. You will learn and develop to that in most cases. But the thing about it, some people look at you and they look at the best in the world and they'd be like, "Well, yours look like crap." When actually, as someone who's starting out, it, you're not doing that bad. So that's one thing I want you guys to think about as well when you're looking at. Um, testing your products or you create something, go to the market itself. 
Ask the kid if you're making something for children. Ask the parent if you're making something for parents. Ask your friends if you feel like they're in your target market, but be aware of that. Don't just throw away your ideas or product just because your close circle did not like the product because they may not be in your target market. And personal story of that is when, um, when I started making particular videos, I started with uh, Facebook and YouTube and stuff like that. As I put out the videos, I will send them to friends and family and co-workers or whatnot. And I will say, hey, will you watch this? They will forget to watch it. They may not like it, whatever the case may be. It was nothing personal. They was just not into finance. But when I say, hey, screw their opinion, I'm just going to put this out anyway. And guess what? I have people like you that tuned in and said, man, I love your videos. I like your videos. And I'm like, wow. The people that I asked, my little think tank, didn't like the videos. Then why do these people like the videos? It's pretty simple. These people was not in your target market where these people are. So that's something I want to be want you to be aware of. And that was like my first, I wasn't my number one, but it's one one of the biggest mistakes I made in business was not seeking out the particular target market and getting their feedback because they may love it. Your friends may hate it, but they may love it, right? And your friends may love it, and they may love it as well. All your friends may love it in your market, may hate it anyway. But anyway, look at your target market, ask them, because we so so uh, make the common mistake of asking friends and family who's close around us, who can care less about the particular product. All right, so now we're going to roll into number two. Number two is, it goes into networking. I always tell people the number one thing that you can have in business Besides your education, besides your money, besides, um, you know, your skills or anything else, I will say is your network. Networking and getting to know people and people knowing you. But this is the trick. It's never about who you know, but always about who knows you. It's never about who you know, but it's about who knows you. There's a big difference. Some people think, hey, um, I know you can go to a meeting or a conference or whatnot, and you may think that um, you met someone and you're like, hey, well, for example, we all know Oprah, right? You know, We all know Michael Jordan. We all know these different celebrities. And you may have met them once or twice. You may have taken a picture with them and they said some cool things. But if you can't get them to do anything for you, then they probably don't know you. Because it's great when you know someone, you may know a, a coworker, or you may know someone in, in a great position of networking, that's great. But do they really know you? And what are the, one of the major ways you can find out is what someone knows you is if they would do something, they will go out of their way, take time out of their day, to help your particular brand cause our situation. So what do I mean by that? How can I relate that to my personal life? Let's take uh, me for example, right? I go out to a uh, meeting and I run into, let's say you've seen on the show here, Metal World Peace, right? Meet Metal World Peace, hey, he says some great things. He says, hey, I think what you're doing is great. I think what you're doing is awesome and whatever the case may be, right? We exchange information or whatever the case may be. So now you go out and you write the particular person and say, hey, well, I would like to maybe do a partnership. I would like to uh, do a business deal. I would like to do anything. And the person never responds. The person doesn't come on your show. The person doesn't help you out in any type of way. You may start to feel a little type of way like, wow, I thought I know this person and this person is not doing anything for me. Because that person probably didn't know you. Yes, you know them, but do they know you? So when you're networking, yes, you may meet a lot of cool people. You'll take a lot of cool pictures and people will say some cool stuff. But the thing about it is who knows you? And you'll figure out who knows you when you open up the doors of your business and you ask for favors and situations, you'll start to figure out very soon. So that's the way, you know, you'll figure out stuff. The next thing is, so, you know, figure out, you know, when you're networking, just be mindful of that. That's number two. Now we're going to roll into number three. Number three, we were just talking about this here in the studio, is the bigger you become or the more success you have in the field or whatever you're doing, 
whether it's uh, fashion, whether it's radio, television, um, author, philanthropy, finance, whatever the case is, the bigger you become, you move up a corporate ladder or anything, is the bigger you become, the more issues you will have. And you may say, Prince, what do you mean by issues? Well, when you are by yourself, let's take me for example, if I want to shoot a podcast, it's pretty easy for me to do. I can just go into my room, I can just turn on my equipment, hit the report, hit the record button, record a podcast, right? Edit the podcast up, or I can go live. I'm gonna go live on Facebook. If you want to go live on YouTube, you can do it. Just hit the live button, boom, you're live. Right, But as you started to gather a following and stuff like that, now let's say if you're doing television or if you're doing radio. Now if you're doing television and radio, now you have to be relied upon the station to handle your, uh, will the station be able to do this? Is the station going to be open? Do the station remember that you have a particular show or episode or whatever the case may be? Now let's say, now that you're at the station, you're in the station on the same page, now let's say if you are, you want to have a guest, you're supposed to have a guest. Now your guest, you relied upon them to make everything go right. Now you have you, you have the station, you have the guests, now you got to worry about the equipment, you got to make sure all these things line in line just so you can pull off one episode, right? Versus when you was in your room doing podcasts with just you by yourself, all you had to do was just hit the upload button. You know, so as you become bigger, you build a team. You have a team now. First, it used to be you doing everything. So if everything was a success or a failure, it was based on you. But when you get into business and stuff like that, now you have partners, you have, uh, you have partners, you got... You, you, you have a staff, and then that staff, you have a staff, you have other people, you have a, this, whatever, all these other pieces that have to move on, that have to move in line for you to do something, to do something correct. So my biggest thing with you is to, one of the things I learned, keep your situation as small as possible. And also live by your word. All, that's the biggest thing that you have in this business is that your word. If you say you're going to do something, you do it. Now, granted, things does happen, but if things happen, you let them know. You let the person know immediately, I can't do this. So that's one of the things you need to make available right away. So the bigger you become, the more issues you will have. That's something that I want you guys to think about. Because, and I won't say that was one of my mistakes, but that was a lesson learned. One of the biggest lessons I had learned was that, hey, as you start to go on and do things like this, then you have to worry about stuff. Now, how does that, re re I'm gonna give you another story how this relates. When someone tells you, hey, I'm going to um, bring you on my show, right? So you go off and you tell all your friends and your family, hey, I'm going to be on the Ellen DeGeneres show, right, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. I'm going to be on the Steve Harvey show or whatever the case may be. Now, let's say if something happens with the Steve Harvey show, the producer calls you and says, oh, yeah, by the way, we're not going to be able to make this happen. Now you have to go back and tell all your friends and your family. Now you look at the boy who cried wolf to say, Hey, I want to get this person on my show. I'm not on the show now, whatever the case may be. So you have to rely on other people the bigger and the more you become because now you have to rely on your plane ticket. You got to rely on your car. You got to rely on a promoter. You have to re rely on your staff. You have to rely on so much stuff the bigger you become to, to make things go right, right? Versus when it was just you doing everything or you and one buddy was doing everything, everything was just between you guys. Hey, I'm gonna do this, he's gonna do that, and that's it. But when you have all these moving pieces, that's when a lot of issues come. So I would tell people, one of the biggest lessons I learned, stay small and compact as possible. One of the biggest lessons I learned out of Berkshire Hathaway, and by that I mean by Berkshire Hathaway was learning that from him down, it was like 20 people there, something like that. So. You know, this company's making hundreds of billions of dollars. So small and compact. When something's small and compact, it's easy to move. It's very easy, quick and to move, to put something out, to do something. 
when you were the bigger you become, you start doing things with other people. Other people are doing things with you, stuff like that. I can't even, I can go so many times of how people said they're going to do something and something happened. And I mean by what I mean by something happened, meaning that the person fell out of something, or you know, they was just not a good person or a bad person, you know. So that's one of the things I want you to think of. The bigger you become, the more situations and problems you may have. But before I get into lessons number four and five, I want to take a quick break. So when I take this quick break, we're going to break into, uh, we're going to come back and we're going to get into lessons four and five. Don't forget about it. You know, the top ones about networking. It's not about who you know and who you met. It's about who knows you. Also keep in mind, try to move small and compact as possible because the bigger, the bigger you become, the more situations and problems arise, arise, or happens because you relied upon so many other things to move in order for you to move. So stay tuned and listen for lessons four and five. This is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. What are you doing? Okay, cool. Research says reading from birth accelerates the baby's brain development. And you're doing that now? Oh, yeah, yeah this is the starting line. Push. When this is over, you're dead. Read aloud 15 minutes. Every child, every parent, every day. Hi, I'm Pete McGuinness-Mark, and every Monday at 1 o'clock, I present Think Tech Hawaii's Research in Manoa, where we bring together researchers from across the campus to describe a whole series of scientifically interesting topics of interest both to Hawaii and around the world. So hopefully you can join me 1 o'clock Monday afternoon for Think Tech Hawaii's Research in Manila. Guys, and you're back live here with the Prince of Investment right here live in Honolulu, Hawaii with your host, Prince Dykes. And before we went into the break, I was speaking about the top things that you learn in business, uh, not the top things, you, but the top three. I did the top three, and I got two more um, in this show. But the top three things that I went through before the break, if you missed it, if you wasn't paying attention during the break or you just tuning in, was number one, it's not about in networking. It's not about who you know, but it's about who you who knows you. And what I mean by that is sometimes when you're networking, yes, you meet a lot of great people and other stuff like that. But, you know, sometimes you may get your feelings hurt when they won't do something for you. And you're like, wow, I thought we had such a great situation. But it's not about who you know. It's about who knows you. Because great, we all know people. But you'll find out who really knows you is when you start to ask for something or you need something. So that's one of the things I want you guys to think about. That was one. The second thing was the wrong test market. A lot of times when you're small, you make a product or you create something, the first people you test it with are people you know. People you know, um, you may turn around and say, hey, um, hey, mom, dad, can you help me out with something or whatever the case may be? And whatever, the, you know, uh, a mom, dad, can, what do you think about this product I created? Hey, mom and dad may not give you the feedback. They may give you good feedback or whatever the case may be. But your mom and dad is like 60, 65 years old. You're trying to target a market that's 25 to 30. That may not be a good representation. So sometimes your friends and network is not a good representation of testing your product with. So that's one of the things you need to think of. <clears throat> Find someone who's in your target market. The uh, third thing is try to keep yourself as small and compact as possible as you're moving around. Because the bigger you become, the more problems and situations you may have. And I broke that down by saying, hey, when you, uh, as you become bigger, when you're doing something on your own, that's one thing, but you become bigger, now you have a staff, and then you go from a staff, then now you have a studio, then now you have a studio, to now you have partners, and now with partners you have guests, and your partners have partners, and now it takes all of these things to have to come together and line up perfectly in order for you to do this one thing perfectly. So. The bigger you become, the more pieces you get to move in, the harder things become because 
you have to make sure all these things are gears intact. So keep yourself as small as possible, right? The um, now we're going to get into the fourth and fifth thing. Number four, you probably heard this before. You probably heard people talk about it, all the other great stuff. And number four is based upon emotions. How does song go? Emotions make you cry sometimes. You have to remove emotions from business. Yes, it's hard to do because naturally we're emotional people. We think with our emotions. We feel with our emotions. That's just who we are and what we are. But when you think about emotions, um, you have to be very mindful of that because sometimes things happen. For example, it's people that are going to straight lie to you. Right? It's going to be some people that you may not like that much or may do something, but you have to remove the emotions from business. So for a prime example, let's say if someone tell you they're going to do something, let's say, hey, I'm going to place you um, on my website and I'm going to feature you in this great article that's going to bring you so much exposure. You're so happy to be featured on this particular product. You don't know what to do with yourself. At the last minute, person says, oh, we're not going to be able to feature you on this product anymore because we have someone that's bigger and better or whatever the case than you are. So we're going to have to see can we do something with you later. What you're going to have to do is if you become emotional and say, wow, no, you told me this and you get all emotional, emotion, you let your emotions rant and rave, right? You let your emotions rant and rave. Now you may mess yourself up out of the situation. So, you know, that could have happened for you. Let's take my personal self for example, right? I had something I was supposed to be featured in, right? They said, hey, everything is great. We're going to have you in there in March. You're going to be featured in this particular article. I said, awesome, great. March rolled around. They said, you know, the article didn't come out. They told me we're not going to be able to do it because this or that happened, right? And, you know, I didn't get emotional. I didn't say, whoa, you know, you told me this. I just really calm. By me really and calm, two to three months later, I got featured in an even better situation because I didn't let my emotions rant and rave. Had I let my emotions rant and rave, that could have just threw gas on the bridge and messed up the situation. So that's one of the things that I wanted to tell you about. Remove emotions out of business. Yes, it's hard to do sometimes because we all are emotional people. But we have to be mindful that, hey, this is business. You're here to get the job done at the end of the day. So you got to remove your emotions out of it. That's one of the things I tell you. Um, the last thing is you have to be mindful, number five, with, I won't say photo ops, but sometimes um, you're networking and people and dealing with people, having the right people. Looking for in me when I'm big on I'm big on integrity, right? And the thing about integrity is, it, tell the truth, tell it like it is. If it didn't happen, if it did happen, I learned that life is always smooth that way, and people will respect you for telling the truth versus trying to fabricate something, make it look all glossy or what is not. Just tell it tell it what it is and tell the truth because you can you can go into the healing process then. But if you pass something on, then things can happen. So my thing is with that is when you're dealing with people in your network, something I learned from Wiley Amos that he told me, he was like, when you're dealing with people in your network, they will, bad people will always throw signs. It's just up to you to be able to catch those signs. So when you have snakes or bad people around you, you will find out eventually if you are paying attention. It's when you're not paying attention and you're like, la, 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 that's when you get bit. So pay attention to what's around you because that person or these people will do something to let you know they're not the right people to have in your corner. Be mindful of that. Be very, very mindful of that. I want you guys to, that's something I want you guys to think about. And the reason why I want you guys to think about that is because when you look at uh, situations sometimes, you have to pay attention to what people do instead of what they say. People say things all the time. Hey, I'm going to do this. I have this. I have that. You know, they take some photos with some people, and you're thinking, like, hey, oh, this is great. But always watch what a person do. Never listen to what they say. That's one of the biggest lessons I learned. I watch people what they do, and I rarely listen to what they say. Because when someone does something 
that's not sitting well with you, you might want to get rid of them before they really bite you later on in the future. And if you're not careful, because sometimes you become, even sometimes it's celebrities. Sometimes people become shell-shocked because it's a celebrity. Oh my God, it's a celebrity. The celebrity's going to do this and do that. So with that celebrity, they will start to think, wow, you know, um, you know, they, but when someone is a celebrity, you know, you kind of look over it and you're like, well, this person is this or that, so I think they're a good person. But you have to be mindful that these people, this person could be bad for you as well. So pay attention to, on lesson number five, watch who you have around you. Very simple and easy, but things like that can happen. Because this, I've met some people that have been, you know, famous and on television and great stuff. And when you meet them, you think that that character that you've seen in the public is the real person. And nine times out of ten, no, that's not them. And the reason why that happens is because um, sometimes you you look over things when they're doing something around you that's not too, you may not like, you're looking over because they're a celebrity. And by you doing that, you can end up getting bit big time in the future. So when you see that, regardless of if it's a celebrity, if it's a business deal, whatever it is, if it doesn't feel right, stay away from it. So those are the five lessons. I'm going to go over them real quick. Watch your test market. When you create a product and you create something, I know you have a tendency to ask mom, dad, friends, family, and stuff like that. But when you do that, sometimes your friends and family may give you a mis not a misconstrued, but they may give you a bad representation of what's going on because of they're looking at you as their son or their you know their brother or their cousin or their coworker, and they're comparing you to the best in the market. So you need to go to your particular market. Number two. It's not about who you know, it's about who knows you. Be very careful of that. Three, the most small as possible because the bigger you become, the more pieces you get, and the more pieces you get, the more people and things you have to rely on. Number four, emotions. Remove your emotions out of business. Number five, watch the people you keep around. Watch the team. Sometimes, regardless of what their money, their influence, or their whatever, their celebrity, whatever it is, if it doesn't feel right, I wouldn't spend too much time around them because you may end up getting bit in the future. All right? So those are the top five lessons that I've learned. And those probably like my big, big, you know, I'm pretty sure I have hundreds of more I can go through. But those are the top five things that I've learned and that maybe something you can take away from it as well. So... Uh, I'm going to get ready to go ahead and close out the show. And I hope you guys loved it. Don't forget to hit the like, subscribe, comment, and share button, all of the great stuff. Until the next video podcast, whatever you see me do, goofy around the world. Peace, be safe. I'm out. Thank you.